Britain has tough laws against many drugs, including heroin, cannabis and smoking. Even shisha pipes are banned from indoor spaces. Yet every Friday and Saturday evening, millions of Britons flood into bars to get drunk, behaving in embarrassing ways and picking fights with strangers. While the United Kingdom does not agree with the laws of other countries where drinking is banned, it treats alcohol differently, as an acceptable drug. Drunkenness is looked upon as funny, even though it is responsible for broken families, thousands of deaths and millions of pounds in health care because of its misuse. So far the British government has talked a lot about the problem, but it seems powerless to do anything about it. So how widespread is it? How many people have been affected by alcohol? And why does Britain drink so much? These are the simple questions we set out to answer. We began by finding out how many people have been affected by alcohol and whether they had examples of alcohol-related behaviour in Britain. What kind of alcohol-related public behaviour have you seen in Britain? Just generally people stumbling around, being outspoken. I think the worst is taxi ranks. I was out the other night. People in taxi ranks are like throwing food around, rolling around on the floor. It's just like you would never do that when you're sober, so why do it when you're drunk? Where I'm from, uh, a lot of fights breaking out, uh, a lot of... Uh sleeping around and that sort of thing. Pretty anti-social really, just people drunk, causing trouble of themselves, causing nuisance, yeah like urinating against walls and things like that, so yeah just basically anti-social really. What kind of uh, alcohol-related public behaviour have you seen in Britain at all? Uh, the worst of things in Cardiff, in the city centre, where it's just rape and pillage, I mean it's just obscene, you got like people pissing in the street, throwing up, the police called off each end of the high street and just let everyone go to it. I think it's quite disgusting, really. Well, there was one incident um, in, in Mill Hill Station near, near, near where I live, and um, this drunk guy, he fell over in the station, and we had to call the, uh, there was a local fire department, um, you know, fire engine station, fire station down uh, just about uh, um, 500 metres away. And uh, the guy fell over and he, 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 he hit his head on the concrete. And we were there with him for about an hour. He was drunk, he, you know, he was out of his mind drunk. And uh, he was an old guy and you felt sorry for him because you know, he was by himself. But anyway, we had to, you know, we went to the station and we got some tissues and stuff. We held it there and you know, he stank of alcohol and, we, and we, we just had to help him. So that's what the public said. We sought the views of our experts to find out how widespread alcohol-related behaviour really is. I think we see a lot of it on our public transport, especially um, late at night. We see a lot of alcohol-related disruption, um, particularly in central London, um, particularly where it's the festive season coming up as well. Um, so I think we do see it on the streets, um, and I think a lot of people are exposed to it. Everybody sees it daily, public behaviour, especially in the weekend. We all see all these drunk people and binge drinking and, and violence in the pub and hitting each other and drunk dr drink and driving, you can see that in public also. And you can hear even in area, in house, people uh, arguing domestic violence connected with alcohol. In fact, 75% they serve domestic violence is connected to alcohol. So that's the extent of alcohol-related behaviour. How do people feel about the regular scenes of drunkenness in the streets of Britain? Me, as a Muslim, I don't usually like... I wouldn't do that. So personally, I would, in, a, in a selfish way, I'd expect people to be like the same, to have the respect for themselves, not to go out and produce this image of themselves that way, you know, it's not... It's not a good image, basically. How do you feel about the regular scenes of drunkenness in Britain's streets? Um, I don't know. I'd say I'm, I'm only I'm 18, so I'd say I've kind of got not used to it, but it's just kind of like it's quite it's quite normal. But um, at the same time, I guess like if you think about it, the kind of binge drinking culture and how like acceptable it is, and how it's not even like really like no one really thinks twice about it. Like, it's quite, I do think it is quite bad. I don't think there's anything that can be done about it in terms of the public doing something. I think it is down to the individual. Um, no one ever oh, just accidentally gets really drunk. You, you drink too much. Anyone who says otherwise is just being a bit of a moron. How do you feel about regular scenes of drunkenness in Britain's streets? Uh, it's quite interesting. I think the older I get, the worse I feel about it, if I'm honest. 
Uh, I think when I was younger, I didn't feel too, uh, too badly about it, but you know, these days, I think it's, um, I think it's something that should be curbed. Certainly, where in uh, in real public places. For me, it's always a shame. I feel compassion towards them, and unfortunately, they have to drink because they're looking for happiness, but they don't know where to find it or how to let it go, how to relax. So it's a shame that they have to undergo. Basically, they have to drink in order to become happy. We turn to our experts to find out about the general public perception and reactions to alcohol. I think from a professional level, um, the way that people interact with one another is particularly um, different when people are under the influence of alcohol. Um, People are generally can be more aggressive, um, their arousal levels are heightened, um, there's an increased level of arguments. Um, so I think in terms of the way that it affects the public, it affects everybody, you know, not just the people who are actually partaking in binge drinking. It's a horrible view, it's a worrying view, it's a, we worry about the life of these people drunk on the road and I don't like to, my children, you know, and grandchildren seeing drunk on the road, etc. And as I said, you want to see it, see it a lot in the weekend, midnight, you know, and uh, Friday night, Saturday night, especially after midnight, you can see a lot. There have been so many TV programs talk showing this disaster of the horrible effect of alcohol to people on the road and people at home and people at work even. Have the public suffered as a result of other people's drinking? We asked if citizens have been a victim of alcohol-related behaviour, such as drunk drivers, someone wanting to fight them, or nuisance neighbours, and if so, what happened? Have you ever been a victim of alcohol-related behaviour, like a, a drunken driver or someone picking a fight or a nuisance neighbour, and if so, what? Yeah, oh, um, many times, you know, like, get abuse from a group of guys drunk or... That's about it, really. Yeah, just yeah, just drunk fights, really. When when there's a group of people and there's another group of people, when you walk past each other, sometimes it just sometimes it can just kick off for no reason at all, really. So yeah, yeah I've been involved in uh, drunken fights before. Yeah, uh, about three years ago, uh, two guys started on me. Um, I, I, one of them was drunk. I don't know about the other one. Um, I don't know why. I was walking along. They asked me for a cigarette. I said I didn't smoke, and then he just decided to try and hit me. Um, yeah, and I'm pretty sure he was drunk. Have you ever been a victim of alcohol-related? behaviour, either drunk driver or someone picking a fight or a nuisance neighbour, and if so, what? No, I've seen many, many things, you know, you see fights all the time, it's, it's mainly boys, isn't it, getting rowdy and overconfident, but no, I've never been a victim of it, obviously I've had drunken people stumble into me and things like that, but nothing directly at me. Um, I've been a victim in terms of the arguments, not an actual fight, but I think the fight was kind of... It was calmed down by other people nearby, but I've seen drink having an effect on people's um, prospect, you know, their, their manner in which they sort of uh, deal with situations. So drink was sort of heightened, sort of aggressive behaviour. So I've seen that on the streets. It's not happened to me personally. I'm lucky enough to have just avoided it or managed to talk my way out of it. So I've been in drunken fights about nothing, absolutely nothing, and I've been picked on from drunk people with my sort of beard and glasses look that wouldn't happen sober. So unfortunately, yes. How much trouble is caused by alcohol? We invited our experts to comment on this serious issue. Personally, I, don't, I can't recall ever being um, a victim of binge drinking. I suppose I've seen the consequences of it as a, as a witness of it, but not a victim. Um, there was an incident where a gentleman was presenting to um, one of our services to get some help for his um, psychological difficulties and because of his regular use of alcohol and binge drinking on the weekends he wasn't able to get the correct services that he needed at the time because he simply couldn't commit to it you know he would come to sessions um, quite intoxicated not really able to concentrate on the things that we were we were working on so you know it, it stopped him from getting to, it stopped him from being in a position where he would, was able to work on those things. I used to be working before psychiatrist in hospital, mental hospital, to treat alcoholic. Part of, some number of patients are alcoholic. And sometimes, frankly, I used to feel scared to, to see the patient, to talk to him, to get 
history, some of them they become abusive while you talk to them. And obviously I used to go also to casualty accident medicine when I used to work in hospital before I'm retired now. So we used to see also some uh, insult, offense coming from these drunk people while you're trying to see what can you do to help them and to give them some treatment. There are health consequences too. Over a million people were admitted to hospital with drink-related problems. Why do the British people drink so much? Well, in fact, over a million people were admitted to hospital with drink-related issues last year. Why does Britain drink so much? Purely a cultural thing. I think, you know, if you go to um, other cities, other European cities like Paris and you've got the cafe culture, um, Britain is all centred around public houses. It's the way we've grown up. Um, it's, uh, it's been a culture that we've had here for a couple of hundred years, I guess, or maybe more. So um, I think that is basically the reason, I think. Um, and I also, I also think mixed in with, uh, you know, other bits and pieces like the tribal culture of football, and I think you've got a pretty bad mix. They, they drink because they simply want to experience happiness. And unfortunately, they're not educated properly in what we call spiritual knowledge, how to be spiritually satisfied. Therefore, they want to be loved, they want to be loved, they want to love, but they don't know how. And, and, and drinking is kind of an easy way to forget about lack of knowledge and instead of striving for some higher ultimate satisfaction, they choose very immediate, but unfortunately it leads to degradation and destruction of oneself. I think it is a cultural thing. It's interesting. I spent a little while in France and you would have thought that the French are much more kind of celebratory of their, well, their wine culture at least, but at the same time have none of the same issues that we do. I don't know. It's an interesting question. It's something that I think if we actually looked at a little bit harder, it would be interesting to find out more. But again, it's something that you'd have to change on a kind of entire national societal basis. So it would be incredibly hard to combat. A million people were admitted to hospital uh, as a result of alcohol-related issues. Why do you think Britain drinks so much? Um, I think it's just uh, it's just our culture. I think at the same time, like I think a lot of people are just like it's so acceptable. Like as in, I don't think I don't think my parents. Well, maybe my mum, but not my dad. Like my dad wouldn't think twice about like he wouldn't like be bothered about me drinking and like I just. Well, my main thing is, is I don't see why it's like okay for people to damage themselves using alcohol and then like other things are like like really like looked down upon when in reality like people like hurt themselves and hurt other people as a result of alcohol. But like. At the end of the day, it's like people's choices, and it's just down to like what people are like. But alcohol definitely does, it can have a bad effect on people, definitely. Wow, a million, wow, that's high. I didn't realise it's that high, actually. Uh, why do we drink so much? I don't know. It could be a myriad of reasons. It could be stress, it could be work, it could be they think that it's, it's okay, it's okay. They don't think it's going to damage their bodies. It, it's, you know, they, don't think they don't see the health effects when they're younger, you know, this sort of thing. And as you get older, you realise, actually, you know, things, you know, think they can affect your body, your liver and that sort of thing, you see. So that, that sort of thing has gone up. I'm not even sure. I think it's mostly because of depression, you know, because people, they're losing their jobs and stuff like that, and it's hard to get a job nowadays as well. So I think they just refer to drinking as the solution of, to their problems. I'm, I'm half Moroccan I'm, and, and I'm half Irish. Um, my mum's a convert. So I've experienced both sides of it, uh, you know, you know, in the, going to Morocco and having, you know, no alcohol and being brought up as a Muslim and then going to Ireland and, and seeing what um, is the norm in that society. And, and it's very similar here. The norm in this society is, um, is to drink and is to have fun like, like that. How expensive is alcohol to the British Health Service? Our experts said this. I think there's a big culture in Britain where people do tend to drink and drink quite heavily at times as well and I think the definition of binge drinking is when people drink a large amount of alcohol in a short space of time um, and you'll notice if you go to central London on a Friday Saturday night you'll see that you know there's happy hours and there's last orders and everyone will try and cram in their drinking within a, pe a period of time um, so I think in the UK we've we've got used to this kind of pattern you know we, we have we get used to going out on a, in an evening and drinking a lot in a short space of time and that for your physical health as well as your psychological health can be quite damaging. Well, first, o over 1.2 million people are admitted to hospital. And so it's a very, very large number. And obviously, why people drink? It's allowed 
it's normal, is publicized. On TV, till now, you can see other TV people start to drink. And I add to that, there are a lot of psychological factors and reason today. People feel depressed, people have financial problem, people feel lonely, people have problem in their marriage, people have problem in their health. This recession, as you know lately, so this encourage more all these psychological factors, stress, anxiety, and many mental illness encourage more people really to go and hit the bottle and, and drink alcohol. Studies suggest that the biggest cause of Britain's binge drinking culture is undiagnosed depression. We asked the public, why is Britain so depressed? Some research shows that the biggest single cause of binge drinking is in fact undiagnosed depression. Why is Britain so depressed? Um, I don't know, I guess it's just, I don't know, I don't, I don't have many people, I don't know many people that are depressed to be honest, but I don't know, money, the weather, um, just maybe people's lifestyles, just different maybe. I, personally I think it's because of the lack of sunlight. I've just come back from travelling in India and uh, it's sunny all the time. Here there's no sunlight, everybody gets down. One fact, I would say the weather, because I lived in Australia and it's, it's a lot nicer and it's a lot more relaxed. Where everything's more, it's a bit more, it's a bit more tense, and everything's everything's on top of you, kind of, which may be one of the reasons. It seems from studies that one of the biggest reasons for binge drinking is undiagnosed depression. Why is Britain so depressed? Wow, didn't know that. Um, I can think of more depressed nations, uh, the ones that are a bit further north that are in the, the, the dark more than we are. But um, I don't know. I, I guess. Uh, in maybe socially undeprived areas, you maybe get a bit more of that than uh, you know maybe in the more affluent areas of uh, you know around here. So I guess it's more to do with um, affluence, which maybe leads to you know alcoholism, which leads to depression. I would guess. I think I think it's to do with people. I think really I think it's to do with how they choose their lifestyle. I mean, like some people get a bit lost in life. Some people don't really follow like what's what's the right thing to do. For me. When I, when I follow something like, say if I, more or less that I came to Islam and I chose to follow the religion, I feel a bit more like secure and I feel with that faith, I have this strong faith that, you know, that to me personally, I don't feel like depressed from all of this because, I, you know, in my eyes, like I love God and I love all that Allah has made for everyone and everything, you know, this life, I'm, I'm blessed to have this life that I have. The weather, potentially, uh, the recessions we're going through, at the minute, I think can cause a lot of a lot of stress and unhappiness. I mean, well, what now? Is it triple dip? Maybe things about the economy, uh, financial situations might be to do with it. But depression as a whole, like, it's not really something you can stop. Undiagnosed depression, especially, like I'm, a lot of people probably are undiagnosed. I don't think that always leads to drinking. Can it really be the case that the weather is so important to people's state of mind? Are there any other reasons too? And generally the UK is quite, they can use alcohol as a coping mechanism, so a way of dealing with their low mood or their depression. So it could be a cause or it could be an effect. And I think that sometimes when we are feeling quite low, we use it to help us get by or it can help us cope with day-to-day -day living. However, what happens is we create this vicious cycle. We drink more, so therefore we feel worse. We feel worse, so we drink more. And it can go on and on and on. Um, I think there's a lot of reasons as to why people might be be quite depressed and, and that can range from um, individual differences to life circumstances. Finally, we turn to a moral question. We asked the public, how they feel about Britain criticising other cultures which have a different attitude towards alcohol or no alcohol at all. How do you feel about Britain criticising other cultures where they have a different attitude towards alcohol or no alcohol at all? Um, I think like I think it's quite hard not to be like narrow-minded when like you're obviously like you grow you grow up in a culture and just get used to a certain way of how people go about things like then. I don't know, I just guess that's just people being narrow-minded. Like, you've got to be able to like accept the fact that other people are going to do whatever they want to do and can't really like have a go, you can't like look down on them for doing, you can't look down on them for doing it. Because at the end of the day, that's just their culture, that's how they've grown up. And if, if the people in England are growing up in that country, 
they would have been exactly the same. What, like abroad and things? I don't know, I, can't, I don't think we can really, really criticise other people when we ain't got it down to our T ourselves, really. So, yeah, that's my view of it. Learn, fight our own battles before we go out fighting other people's battles. Um, I don't think Britain can criticise other countries for having a different opinion than us. Um, similarly, how we'd get particularly upset if you know, Amsterdam started saying to us, why haven't you legalised marijuana? We turn around and have all these reasons for it, so why should we then go around and say, to Amsterdam, you shouldn't have legalised it, or, you know, everyone should drink the same as us. You know, we're right. No, we're not right. It's just a different way of looking at it. How do you feel about Britain criticising other cultures who have a different relationship towards alcohol, or indeed no alcohol at all? Um, I would say that's pretty poor, if I'm honest. I think, you know, we have our own culture here, and we have our own problems um, to deal with here. Um, and maybe we shouldn't, you know, sort of cast stones at others when we've got so many things to deal with here. I don't, no, one, no one has the right to criticise anyone, really. No one, just personally, like, no one has that right to say this person's like that because of this or to criticise anyone. Uh, I think we have absolutely no ground to stand on when criticising other countries about their consumption of alcohol. I think, I'll say the UK, which still currently includes Scotland, I'd say Scotland, us, Wales, we all have a terrible, terrible drinking culture. And for us to abuse other European countries is completely wrong on every level. We asked our experts for their personal view regarding Britain's willingness to criticise other countries despite the UK's own track record with alcohol. Um, I think it would be unfair for... Um for the UK to criticise other cultures and the way that they engage in alcohol um, alcohol use, um, simply because other European countries seem to have a better idea of what to do. They drink more socially um, and don't tend to binge drink as much as people in the UK. So I think it would be, like I said, unfair for us to criticise others and maybe take a, a leaf out of their book and see whether we can learn some lessons from them. People living in glass house should not throw stone. This is English word. I like it. They're trying to throw stone at us and even when you meet people, oh you don't drink alcohol, oh you are living in you know in dark ages etc and some criticism will come and some Muslim shy they don't talk, I don't I don't drink alcohol. I think time has come and I, I, I thank Press TV for bringing this subject now. Time has come now. Put religion aside. They don't want to listen to religion. Obviously, in our religion, in, in our life as Muslim, religion has given the banning and prohibition. I want to keep it aside. People will not understand religion or practice religion. Although there are a lot of verses in the Bible related to avoid to alcohol and to avoid drunk person will not enter heaven, for example, something like this. Time has come, and I believe strongly, and Muslim and non-Muslim, and doctor and parent, and psychiatrist and psychologist, and prison officer and police, they all should sit together. Britain used to promote its values and culture throughout its empire. It has long upheld the importance of personal standards of behavior in the countries it ruled. But every night, drunkenness and poor behaviour in the UK itself tells a different story. What has happened to Britain, where binge drinking seems a part of its identity? Perhaps it's time for the United Kingdom to stop preaching to others and focus on getting its own house in sober order first. <laughs>